Hi everybody, this is Karen from Soterian. You're listening to the SAP Security and GRC podcast with host Dudley Cartwright, the show for people who prioritize risk in their organization and want to go about it by working smart, not hard. On this episode, we'll be talking about provisioning of SAP access and in particular, provisioning access via a GRC access control solution and or an identity access management solution. We'll be joined by industry experts Karen Mayer from DXC, Sam Bilia from Capgemini, and Quintus Hergert from Linkies Consulting. Thank you for joining us. So we're here to talk about uh, the provisioning of of SAP access, and in particular, uh, provisioning access via a GLC or access control solution, uh, and or provisioning access via an IDM or identity access management solution. Um, So... Mm. It's for those companies that have either got both solutions or are considering having both a GLC access control solution as well as an IDM or identity access management solution. Provisioning can be done in both solutions. And so deciding or choosing which solution you actually provision your SAP access uh, with can become quite an important uh, decision in that choosing the wrong solution can create uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of complexity, um, and a lot of frustration. So in today's um, session, you know, it'll be nice if we can just share some of our experiences, talk about the pros and cons of of provisioning using each of those uh, solutions, and, you know, just share some of our, um, you know, some of our experience and some of our thoughts with, with that. Um, so maybe to start, a few introductions. My name is Dudley Cartwright. I'm from Saturn. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, some very experienced um, resources from, from Down Under. So Karen, do you want to start, uh, in- introduce yourself first? Yeah, I'm Karen Meyer. I am with DXE in New Zealand, and I've been doing SAP security and governance for over 20 years now. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Sam? Sam Bellier, I work for Capgemini uh, Australia, New Zealand. I've been doing uh, or working with SAP security for 17 years now. Thank you. Quintus? I'm Quintus Hogan. I'm not from Down Under. I'm uh, based in South Africa. Uh, I've been in the SAP security space for uh, nearly actually 30 years now already. Um, And uh, I do quite a bit of consulting also. uh, internationally. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay, so as I said, uh, a wealth of experience there. So good. Okay, so I think just just to try and give a bit of context to the the viewers or the, or the, or the listeners, I just want to take a step back and just maybe remind ourselves of the evolution of the provisioning uh, process. So if we think back in the R2, early R3 days, um, either profiles or roles were assigned directly to users. Then SAP introduced the concept of the SAP composite role, which was a, which is a data collection uh, of of single roles from a, from the from the one SAP system that can then be assigned to a user. Um, Sam, you you reminded me last time of central user administration, which SAP also introduced to try and assist with the provisioning process, and also between managing the different landscapes, your development, your QA, and your production environments. Uh, then SAP introduced the the org org structure where you could go and assign roles to a PD object, a position. And as a person was assigned to that position, they would then inherit uh, all of that access. So all of these um, enhancements were to try and improve the efficiencies of the provisioning process and also to try and improve the the security, uh, the the access control of, of what people have um, have been assigned. So then uh, the, the GLC or access control solutions came onto the market and the business role concept was introduced. So the business roles are similar to an SAP composite role in that it's a container for a number of, of roles, uh, but more powerful than the SAP comp- the composite roles in that these can be uh, roles from multiple uh, SAP systems. Okay, again, to try and uh, assign a bundle of roles together that when assigned to a user, it uh, improves the efficiency process. 
then I guess the identity access management solutions came onto the market and they also had the concept of the business role. And I guess we, we all thought this was going to be utopia because the identity access management solutions business role would be more powerful than the business role in the, from the access control solution in that it would allow you to also include non-SAP access in that business role. So... Um, you know, this, this we all thought was going to be the way that every company would go. Um, but it hasn't really worked out that way. And I guess in, in today's session, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each. But, uh, you know, it's, it's fair to say that this utopia of provisioning access via the, you know, via the business role concept in the identity access management, the business role concept is not proved to be as uh, easy as, as as we all thought it would, would be. So maybe just to open it up to the floor now, um, maybe start with you, Karen, you, you've got a lot of experience with this. Um, although provisioning access via the IDM or identity access management, management solution, creating the business roles there um, can be done very effectively. Um, it, it, that can come with some costs, I guess, and some it, challenges. It can, it can come with some costs and some challenges. Um, it is a my experience has been that it is a more complex setup that works very well for the very large companies, um, but can be a bit overly complicated and need too much in-house expertise to actually continue to use it effectively. And that a lot of clients have found that actually it's just, it's too much for them. Um, it's just overcomplicated. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's taking it a step too far for them, particularly when sort of ninety-five percent of their business is running on an SAP-centric system. Therefore, they could use something like a GRC yeah. um, solution yeah. to do the provisioning. Um, so I've I've seen it yeah. at, the, at the biggies um, where they've got. I had a client that had about twenty-seven systems attached to their IDM, and it worked really, really well for them. But they were they were one yeah. of the, no, no. the bigger yeah. clients. Yeah. Sam, any comment from you on this? Yes. Scale and pr procedural disciplines are key. So organisations that um, develop and enforce role-based security and adhere to the design and the access principles both IDM, in my experience, both IDM and GRC um, are fit for purpose. And that is the proviso. Either solutions will lock you into a security mechanism that removes the flexibility to add and remove security roles from users quickly. That's the that is one of the, one of the main disadvantages, and I see that a lot in clients trying to implement an identity based solution, right? Trying to make it easier easier for themselves and efficient. So, what my my take on this is, and what I'd like to for people to understand is either GRC or IDM. And I tend to lean towards GRC like you, Karen. Um, it's a simpler solution. However, IDM will do the, the will, will work effectively the same way if configured correctly. If the disciplines are there and the security design is adhered to, so if a person's access is reflective of their job position, then either solution is is great so sam may, maybe i'll jump in there then you know just talking about that would would you be able to say that one of the solutions would be better at defining more appropriate business roles than the other so let's let's you know is this going to be one of the pros and cons of each of the solutions um would you say that the grc solutions are typically have got better risk information and better usage information so could you argue that the defining the business roles, if you've got good usage information, you should be able to assign more appropriate business roles for a set of, of users? Um, 
Would yes. You agree yeah. With that? I, I, yeah. Dudley, yes, I'd agree with that. And hmm. yes, GRC yeah. provides that tracking information that IDM does yeah. not out of the box. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that, Dudley. We're working on a client at the moment who are using Citerion. We are using their current usage information to determine some new composite roles and actually to determine what Fiori is going to be needed by different business units going forward. Um, we are using your information of what they're using today from a business process perspective and mapping that up to what will be it will replace at a Fiori app yeah. level and then using that to actually build effective um, yeah, business, business roles, business roles yeah. going forward. Yes, yeah. it's been so, so, invaluable information. Yeah. You know. So so Quintus, maybe I, I can just ask you then, you know, I guess the challenge then with the IDM solutions is they having to base the 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 truth uh, the source of the truth is the HR feed. Um, and that they'll need to, because there's no usage information, they'll need to go and say, okay, well, who are all the accounts payable clerks according to the HR, um, you, you know, uh, the, the HR master data. And I guess the, the problem with, with many organizations is pe people are not always, the access that they're performing in SAP is not always reflective of what the HR position description is. So if, if you're using the HR feed as the source of your truth to go and build up your, your, um, your business role in your IDM solution, you, you potentially can start creating very inappropriate access because you're grouping users that are performing very different functions, but just because HR have given them the same title, but actually on the ground, they're doing quite different things. Actually, Daddy, that, you know, um, when you took us through the journey in the beginning, uh, starting back from profiles and on R2, and obviously I'm dating back from that time already. And when, when SAP introduced the org structure, assigning to the org structure, um, going through that journey, that's already where this was picked up, what you are identifying now, because we all that said, oh, this is going to be efficient and we're going to assign to that. Um, and I thought, you know, myself included and all of us would have learned the lesson that it is not working like that way you know it's and it's also where the focus come in from you know if you're coming in from uh, uh, um, IDM solution the, uh, for me the, the focus is not on the SAP side so unfortunately this is one of those things that people have to go through and, and realize oh hold on this is not working and and as much as I try to from you getting to clients advising this there's, there's this idea that that is going to be the answer because yes, this person is an uh, accredited clerk and therefore they should be doing that. In reality, it doesn't work out like that. So definitely that misalignment between what the HR uh, um, assignment for that position is versus what the SAP activities is. And coming back to Karen's uh, um, and your earlier statement is, that's where the, the, the historical usage data comes in very handy to disprove, to prove that point that there's a misalignment between those two. Yeah, people yeah. are doing and, something completely outside of their position, but yeah. it yeah. is part of their job. Yeah. Karen, and, and, I think and also, sorry, Karen. Sorry, I think also that the 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 if the focus is coming from the SAP side, um, and and not from the IDM side, there's normally a better alignment. Because people are more aware of that, you know, but if it comes in, if the project is driven, and in most cases in the bigger corporations, this is driven from the IDM side because they're trying to bring in this efficiency side. And therefore, your SAP team has to be very strong and saying, listen, um, uh, uh, you know, this is, but because it's something new, and like you say, we all thought it's going to be the answer to everybody's problems, you sort of like hesitant at the beginning to push this. But the advice is to really go back and look, you know, and bring it from the SAP. Because ultimately, it is uh, from the SAP that we're talking about, is a provisioning the SAP system. And the IDM system, like um, Sam was saying, there is definitely the benefits for all the other systems coming in. But you must make sure that it's aligned. And I think that's where the historical data comes in. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah. No. So, Karen, you mentioned there you're busy with a project there uh, with, with, with there being a large organization. So, I guess also companies also need to understand what their business objectives are. You know, how much importance are they placing on improving efficiencies and how much importance do they need to place on managing risk? And, and until they understand that and weigh those two up, 
um, you know, only then will they be able to then also make a decision. Are we going to use provision our access via business roles in the IDM solution or the GRC solution? So I guess for the large organizations, there's a much bigger emphasis on improving efficiencies. You know, the, the shells yeah, yeah. and VPs of this world that have got possibly 50,000 SAP users, um, just the cost and effort of, of provisioning the access there must be significant. You know, so a big drive for them will be about improving efficiencies. So I guess in, in those cases, they, you know, it does depend on, on, on you know, your size and also what, what, what your weighting is of, of each of those. Uh, con and unfortunately, they're conflicting business objectives because as you, if you want to improve efficiencies, unfortunately, you often end up with a less secure solution. People end up with wider access, uh, which is typically the case. Um, so, you know, and as you try and uh, ensure a, a more secure solution, unfortunately, the effort of provisioning increases, you know, so those are sort of conflicting activities in many cases. Yeah, we've so, been very lucky with this client that they've gone right back to their business processes and actually gone through uh, the business process level, end to end, how they do their business process. And we have sat with them and put apps to those business processes and then being able to actually look at the Sativian rule set and be able to actually map them to functions within the rule set and tell them before we even start building whether or not they had SOD issues. So before we yeah. even got as far as actually getting our fingers on the keyboard, we were able to tell them you might want to move that down into your admin team. Um, and they've taken it very well um, and really wanted to, yeah. you know, really wanted to have an efficient system. And by using some of the newer functionality in Fiori, we've been able to actually build in workflows that have speeded up the process enough that they are now willing to let it go, it bounce back up to be approved and back, and back down because it is such an immediate process. So things I feel like with the newer world, people are um, understanding that governance is has to be built in right from the beginning and that the governance has to be within their business process. It's not, I, we can't build it and then go, oh, it's got governance issues and they look at IT to fix them. If the business, if the governance issues are at the business process, it has to be fixed at the business process. Um, and I do feel that we are slowly turning the tide on that one. And um, we're starting to do it right yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. What I'm saying is there is a, a greater appetite now to protect the organization's assets, right? Whether that's information or to protect information assets um, uh, provided to users that should not be seeing this data or fraud or um, uh, things such as um, systems access that could... Um, create an issue in terms of even um, developers, functional consultants. What, what I've been doing, particularly with large projects, is I've, I'll, I'll sit down and organise a meeting even at the C level and we explain these are the options and this is our experience with these options. What do you, where do you want to go with this? So, because a lot of organisations, like, like, you, like you said before, a lot of organisations, it's a journey. It's a journey for them to understand what 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 is risk to them? What what is their risk? Um, um, what is what does okay. risk look like to them? Yeah, mm -hmm. and and so having those, and, and this is where I'm seeing things changing the ability to have those discussions now the appetite to have those discussions that's changed which is great you know? i think karen with what you're saying there and what sam's saying is we, we had the terminology obviously quick earlier about privacy by design you know when you do the design like you said with your client and you could do the privacy by design but now even the deeper level is 
Segregation of duty or risk by design, and that's I think we what Sam is saying now. But explaining to the client is, if you can bring that in the design phase, you save yourself a lot of head, headaches oh, at yeah. the at the end of the oh, process. Really yeah, I, I suppose too, because we all know that retro fixing or correcting roles is so difficult. You know, if you can create a business role that's very inappropriate for a group of users. Once they're all working, to go in and re-engineer that role becomes very difficult. So once it's in, it sort of stays in, you know. So Karen, I guess, you know, to, to go to your point, you know, having it designed correctly from the start is paramount because fixing it later, trying to address security at a later point is, is incredibly uh, it's expensive. Challenging. It's expensive. Uh, it's yeah. expensive and it causes outages in a set for business users. Uh, you know, tr tr chasing our tails a little bit. And I, I think the term, I mean, we use the term security by design, right? So when we're doing configuration, security is always part of the discussion. And 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 that's where we're seeing changes in the industry, you know, having the, the recent Optus, I'm not sure if you, you're across this one in South Africa. Uh, we had a recent um, security event with Optus, the telecommunications company where, personal information of um, potentially 2.8 million uh, customers may have been leaked. And, and these events have been raising awareness. Um, yeah, it's still the challenge. Um, I think also, Sam, what you mentioned earlier, which, I, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, uh, which is, is involved in this place, is there definitely seems to be a, a lot more sort of workshops and consultation between the secure, SAP security or GRC teams and the IDM and cyber teams, where I think five yeah. years ago, everyone was fighting for their turf. And they said, well, we're going to, you know, I'm the cyber guy, therefore we're going to try and do everything in the IDM solution. Where I think there's been much more healthy discussions and workshops between those two sort of divisions to say, well, what is the capability of this particular uh, GRC solution that we've got? And what is the capability of the IDM solution that we've got? And, and let's decide which solution is going to be best to perform certain functions. So I think we, we've matured a, a bit in, in, in the project space there where there, there's a, it's not so siloed between the SAP security teams and, and the cyber teams. And a little bit more talking about, well, what can each of those solutions do and which solution is going to be best placed to perform form, um, you know, certain activities where, where both solutions can possibly perform those, those solutions. Mm. So if we were to look at the pros and cons of provisioning or creating uh, provisioning access via the, I, you know, the identity access management solution. So, you know, on, you know, if we look at the, the, the pros of that, I guess the one attractive thing for many organizations is it's, um, it's a similar look and feel or similar experience for, for your users. They're using the one solution to, to review and approve or perform user access reviews for all the users' access, regardless of whether it's SAP, it's all system access. So I guess that's quite an attractive um, advantage that a lot of CIOs are, are looking for. Um, on the negative side, we've, as we've mentioned, limited risk information that comes, that's available uh, in the identity access management solution and limited usage information. So, so that, you know, if we think from a business perspective that makes performing user access reviews may be a little bit more challenging uh, because you're lacking some information. Would, would you agree with, with, with that statement? Definitely, definitely, yeah. you're on the mark. So, so, yeah. so I think then if we if we think okay, so when there's if it's a company that's you know wall to wall SAP, the, a lot of the activities are done done in SAP. Therefore, um, a lot of the access risk sits in SAP. So, um, if we look then at the pros and cons then of the provisioning access in the GRC solution, again, what we've got use, usage information, so we can create more appropriate. In theory, we can create more appropriate business roles for that group of users because we can base it on the usage information for that group of users. And we can also make decisions based on the, 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 the risk results of, of that business role. Uh, what, what access risk does that business role contain and then make a decision whether, whether that's acceptable to the organization or not. Um, and and um, on the negative side, um, I, I guess, the challenge is that for some organizations, they may be logging into two different solutions to perform 
user access reviews or re reviews. They, they're logging into, they're, they're approving the SAP access in the access control solution, and they're all approving their users non-SAP access in the IDM solution, which you know, can, can be a quite, quite a sort of downside for, for some organizations. So, so the, I think um, at least the, the benefit here is um, you brought bringing about the, uh, you know, the, use, the central user administration, the business role does make it easier for at least cross, you know, assigning and approving across all the SAP landscapes. That's a big advantage that came in now, at least. So it is not as bad as it was before. You still have that efficiencies coming through just looking at the business role. But you definitely uh, agree with you because it's across the different systems. And, and like you also said, that being, being a, a SAP uh, focus and risk focus, that's actually where the risk is. So obviously, uh, from an uh, audit perspective, my background, where I'm coming from, that's where my tendency is lying. You know, I will put the risk... Um, higher value than the efficiency side, just because from the uh, the view that I'm taking on that, and and I think as Sam was saying, more and more people are coming aware, and or, okay, and more and more people are coming aware of that, and there's a tendency to to have a bit more focus on that. But yeah, yeah. so so but the business so, role does have so, an advantage. Yeah, so so you're saying then, so if an organisation places more emphasis on risk, then possibly consider using your GOC or access control solution to create your business roles and perform your provisioning. If you're an organization that don't place much emphasis on risk, but you place a lot more emphasis on the improving the efficiencies of the provisioning process, then consider the, the business role in the identity access management solution. Is, is, is that what we, do we all, is, is that a fair statement? Or do we agree with that to some extent? To an extent, um, like we're working in with a company that has a very, very large call center at the moment. They really do do the same thing. So for them, they need that area to be very efficient. It needs to happen very, very quickly. We have the pre-approved business role. It doesn't, it literally just, bang, they, they go into that position in success factors. It pushes it down and it, it, it hits GRC, but it doesn't actually do anything because it knows it's pre-approved. And from the point of hitting the button in the HR to the person having access is probably less than five minutes. And then, but then you've got your more complex people who are more of a, well, they need this, but they might need a bit of that. And they might need a bit of this that can actually be raised and comes through and does a proper GRC check. Um, but those are the people within the business that they can probably wait for half a day for somebody to approve yeah, it. Yeah. So we have managed to balance it within the same organization using the same tool to get those real high, the high turnover of staff as well in a call center, as opposed to a HR manager. You might change your HR manager every five years. You might get a new call center staff daily. So yeah. we've been able to manage that um, within- just, just, to, just to call that, just to call that Karen on that. When you're, and, and you're, I, I hope you'll agree with this one. Mm. If when, when we use position based security, so HR security, when a person is assigned to a HR position and that workflow occurs, the security risk moves from a moves from, say, a security consultant or an automated process to a HR person assigning an org, uh, an, org, an org level to an end user. So that has an element of risk in itself, right? It can, so yeah. It can have a, yeah, yeah, correct. It can. So I, I think uh, I, I, I tend to prefer the GRC approach um, and because of the fact of the access risk analysis functionality and the review fu the, the review functionality, right? So if, if an organisation has a, a processes in place for detective type analysis, when an, an event like that occurs, say a HR person puts a, assigns a, a wrong org level value to an end user, 
um, there is a, a detective measure at the end of it. So if you had to have if you had to have one solution, Dudley, one for most organisations, would you agree it's probably GRC? Yeah, I suppose it depends how much importance that organisation is placing on risk. You know, some of those retailers place very little importance on risk. So for them, you know, they might say, well, we're happy just to use, um, you know, provision the access via the IDM solution, and we've got very little visibility from a risk perspective. It's all about efficiencies. Um, but Sam, we, we all, all four of us on, the, on this call come from a security background, from a risk background. So I think we we biased towards the GRC solutions. I, I think we've seen that we're Correct, very we well are, and, yeah. and we, we, we like the idea of managing risk first, um, you, you know. So, you know, I think we definitely are all in agreement with, 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 uh, with that. Um, and, um, yeah, you, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, but maybe then for an organization that's placing equal emphasis on risk and um, and if, if improving efficiencies of provisioning, is, is there a hybrid model? You know, Karen, I know we've spoken about this offline mm, before. Yeah. Where uh, is there a model where you can define your business role in the GRC solution? You can you can get the, the business role owner to to have a review the access and the risks and the usage within that. And once that's defined and set up, have have the provisioning of that um, re replicate that business role in the IDM solution and and do the provisioning there. Um, is 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 that is that a, a an option? I think that I think addresses yeah. Sam, Sam's concern also. You know, where Sam was saying, you know, that um, uh, where the risk uh, using the GRC solution to define exactly what you're saying, Daddy. So I think it's a definitely the, that's definitely the answer. Uh, and perhaps I'm more biased coming from the audit background, from the risk perspective. You know, so that's more the focus. But I think so. As, uh, Sam touched uh, really uh, hit the nail on the head there because. Um, you design the role, what you're saying, the combination, that, that is definitely for me the answer because you have that, you, you're effectively using what you were highlighting the pros and cons of each of the two systems. By having, um, uh, you know, having both the solutions, you have the best of both worlds because you're using the advantages of the GRC for what it is purposeful and you're using the advantages of the uh, IDM side. And I think Sam, with the risk where Sam is talking about, then at least we know the business role has been well thought of and approved. The risk of then an HR person assigning a wrong position in the position, and that's another risk. Obviously, we have to have the normal four hour process, in that, and that will be addressed there. But uh, I definitely agree with you, Dudley. What you the, the hybrid solution, it is the best of both worlds for us. Yeah, we do have it slightly mitigated, Sam. That when they get put into a position, they also get sent a hold of training. And until they've finished all that training, they don't get their position assigned. So you're hoping that if you get sent a whole load of wrong training, that somebody's going to raise their hand and say, This has nothing to do with my job. But, you know, not everybody would, but you hope that they would. Yeah. Good. Okay. So listen, guys, I think we're about to start running out of time. So, if we were to try and just sort of end the session with uh, some of the key takeaways, uh, maybe I'll start with a few key takeaways and if you guys can just add to that. So one, um, I suppose important for the organization to understand what their business objectives are. How important is it for them to manage risk and how important is it for them to improve efficiencies? Because either of the, depending on the, the, the level of importance of each of those, that may level of importance of each to which solution you would use uh, to, to um, provision your access. Um, also, I suppose it's very, because there's so many access control solutions on the market, so many IDM or access management solutions in, on the market, depending on which ones you have got implemented at your organization, understand what its capabilities are. You know, I, I guess not all, all solutions are, are made equal. So understand what is the capabilities of your GRC solution, understand what the capabilities are of the IDM solution, and then work out where is it going to be best to, to perform, uh, you know, perform those functions. The, the one thing that we haven't really touched on is, Karen, I know you've got more experience with this, but we are of the opinion that you must try and limit the amount of integrations as far as possible between the two solutions. There has to be some integrations, no doubt, but try and have them 
have as few integrations as possible because those often break, they often fall over. So, um, you, you know, we have the opinion that if something comes standard in the one solution, r- rather use that than trying to replicate that functionality in, in the other solution. Would you, would you agree with, you know, that statement? I would agree. And I would agree with the, I think we've talked about this before, Dudley, the pre-approved roles, um, yeah. so that we're not having to bounce information back and forward too often bring it across when it needs a risk review um but try not to have too much information bouncing left and right um particularly if you can particularly with workflow if you can bounce it across do the whole workflow in one system and then bring the result back rather than it coming across doing the review bouncing back up to IDM for an approval, bouncing back down to GRC. I've seen some where it's like a game of tennis um, and inevitably something goes wrong yeah. um, and you end up with, with things yeah. getting and, and I suppose also, Karen, when you're also trying to move a lot of data from the one system to the other system, so if there is like usage information in the GRC solution and you're trying to replicate that in the IDM solution, there's a lot of data that's been moved from the one system to the other. So you said just many yeah. points where where those jobs can fall over and, and, and you know, can fail. So Yeah, where data mapping can be wrong. We've had problems where we're looking at data in the IDM solution and it ju- it's just not right. And it's yeah. one field has, you know, somebody's missed a comma and now everything beyond that comma is out. Um, and you're looking at, you're looking at information that just looks totally wrong. And it takes quite a while to go back and go, where exactly in this file did this go wrong? And you yeah. eventually find a, co- a comma somewhere that's been edited out by somebody yeah so yeah and, and, and idm is quite powerful in in the sense that it can make mass changes very quickly okay. and i've seen situations where users have come in in the morning and no one has access their access has been removed yeah. uh, yeah. and, walk in and everybody's gone gone <laughs> Yeah, so, Sam, I, I remember you've spoken of this before that you, you've said when things um, go wrong there, they go very wrong. Hey. They go very wrong with IDM. And, yeah. and just another point with IDM, IDM, IDM is very technical in its design and does not have a, a nice UI that an average security consultant can log into and use effectively. It's very technical. And this is why I, I, I lean towards the GRC solution as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it, it's an assessment, you know, uh, it's it's having, so you've got here are the stakeholders, you've got architects, you've got uh, security and audit, you've got um, non-SAP security uh, consultants, um, and then you've got um, the financier of the project. So you've got all these people and all these stakeholders, bringing them together at the at the very start is is, is of the project is is important um, because you can quickly and um, you can quickly engineer something um, or or design something that becomes quite a complex yeah. uh, solution that may not be not but may not be required at all. Right. Yeah, Sam, but I, I think you raise a, a, a very valid or important point there where you said, you know, consider the how technical the solution is and what is the what is the market, how many resources are there in the market that are specialized or experts in that area? Because you may end up struggling to, to find the necessary support for, for that. So, you know, I think is that not also quite an important consideration as part of that is, um, you know, well, what is the expertise in the market for certain um, solutions and then making sure that, you know, you, you, you may go and design a, 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 a brilliant offering in a solution that you're going to have to struggle to get some ongoing support f- from a resource, from an expertise resourcing perspective. So, yeah. 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 I, I remember a, a client um, that took up, GRC and IDM and for their organization and they had um, less than 500 users 
right? And it was, is you can quickly over-engineer um, and create more costs yeah. and lose flexibility to assign access. Yeah. No, good. Listen, guys, we're running out of time now. So if there's any other key takeaways that we want to add, um, but yeah, thank you very much, guys, for joining that. Um, great, great to to share your thoughts. Um, we really enjoyed listening to that. And yeah, we until we do the next podcast, we'll hear from you soon. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for organizing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye.